Welcome to the Flash Finds Podcast, the world's fastest podcast where we explore how Facebook can help you with the stuff you're into. I'm your host, Emma Rogue, and today I'm with creator and home decor guru, Julie Souza. Julie, what's your number one tip? So if you're into home decor, I would suggest looking into Buy Nothing Facebook groups. It's a great way to explore your style all for free. Ooh, we love free stuff. Thanks, Julie. See you next time on the Flash Finds Podcast, all about discovering the stuff on Facebook you care about. Bye. If you're thinking, I should go for a run today, but it looks like it could rain, Sierra says save on epic rain jackets. If you're also thinking, but I can't go out in these beat up old running shoes, Sierra says save on top brand running shoes. And if you're still thinking, but I'm also busy performing brain surgery, well then we say, you really should have led with that. Sierra, let's get moving to your local store, like now, go. This episode is brought to you by Twizzlers. Long day, late night, feeling a little bored. Twizzlers is the ultimate sidekick for any moment of the day, no matter what kind of day you're having. The perfect level of sweet and a fun excuse to sit back and relax. Unwind with Twizzlers. To buy now, visit hersheyland.com slash Twizzlers. Age of Radio. It's Taken 2 with Liam Neeson. Yes, Taken 2 with Liam Neeson. This film is set in Constantinople. I think you mean Istanbul. It is full of tropes and plot convenience too. Why'd they make it? I can't say. Neeson just wanted a super payday. It's Taken 2 with Liam Neeson. Yes, Taken 2 with Liam Neeson. Was this one better than the first? No, but it's certainly not the worst. That's when I'm on to pressure now The question always comes back to me What were they thinking now? Oh, what were they thinking? What were they thinking? Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to what were they thinking a podcast about bad to questionable movies i of course am your host nathan uh and we got a doozy this weekend uh, this week rather or weekend whenever you're listening to this uh but <laughs> goes hand in hand with what's coming up next week so spoilers uh this week we are talking about taken to istanbul uh, and with me, as always, uh, is the, uh, the 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 Lenny to my uh, Liam Neeson. What the hell is his name in this movie? Uh, Brian Mills. <laughs> Brian Mills. Yeah, you got a guy named Liam Neeson. You're gonna give a name like Brian Mills. It's like the, the most boring name in the world. But anyways, uh, it's Brendan. How you doing, Brendan? I I'm doing great. Who the fuck is the guy you said? Uh, oh no, it's not a guy. That's Lenny. That's Lenore. That's Femke Jensen. Oh, I see what you're doing. The whole Godfather thing. All right. <laughs> I thought you were gonna call me the Maggie Grace and that I was your daughter. <laughs> 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 using uh my using a terrific rescue strategy, which I'm sure we'll talk about many times in this episode. Uh <laughs> yeah, Taken Two. Nathan, full disclosure, I don't think I've ever seen a single Taken movie first one's good that's what i this remember fun. <laughs> i remember hearing that the first one is like a solidly put together movie and i did notice that taken two and you know what we might as well just spoil it right now next week is going to be taken three we're, that's we're right doing back it. to back sequels we're doing it um but i did notice first that this one time and taken, ever <laughs> i did notice that this one and taken three were both directed by a different person than the first one and luke besson has no involvement in this one or the third one <laughs> I think Which, he gets a writing credit in the first one, but in this but it, one, oh, maybe like a story by credit, something like that. I know he's got he's got something other than just like producer credit. He's got like yeah. a writing credit and a and of course based characters based on credit, based on the novel Push by Sapphire. That's got to be it. Yeah, <laughs> it's a very loose adaptation, Nathan. It <laughs> plays fast and loose with the rules, but it's it, it's more or less precious. It was really interesting to see Mariah Carey play human trafficker. 
<laughs> I did think it was uh, questionable to have um, Liam Neeson play Precious, though. I thought that was a bit, that was pushing it a bit far. Well, I mean, fairness to him, he definitely went, you know, all out eating those, you know, that fried chicken and pig knuckles. So, <laughs> <laughs> Unf- unfortunately, he's hard goes... to watch. Oh, oh yeah. For a second, I was like, "What are you talking about?" Oh yeah, those scenes in Precious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we're not talking about that, thankfully. The uplifting uh, laugh of riot taken to, uh, like I said, Istanbul. Uh, yeah. Going to give you the uh, the brief rundown of the plot. That's right, Brent. Uh, the plot as it sets in this movie, um, you know, Brian Mills takes his family on a European vacation holiday row. Um, and of course, uh, him and uh, his wife, uh, Lenny, played by Fanka Jensen, uh, get taken to. And uh, of course, it's a it's a race against time to to rescue uh, his ex-wife uh, with the help of his daughter, who was taken in the first movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and he is taken in this movie uh, by the father of the guy who took his daughter uh, in the first movie, who was out for revenge uh, for his human trafficker son. Yep. The hilarity ensues. <laughs> well, kind of. <laughs> A little bit. A little bit. Um, Right away, can I just say, I, I know it, it would be, I'm not saying he would be like the villain when I say antagonist, but wouldn't it be like an interesting thing to like make this movie just like from the perspective of that guy? Like, that guy's, like, then his perspective is, well, you killed my son, and Liam Neeson's technically the antagonist. <laughs> but I, his son was a human trafficker. Oh, I know. <laughs> Trust me, I know. But it would just be, int- I, I don't know, I think it would be interesting. It would be interesting to have a, a very flawed character leading the charge. Because technically, <laughs> he did kill him. He I mean, wants technically, some kind of yeah, I suppose. I'm just saying, uh, Nathan, human traffickers are people too, okay? Okay. Like, the sound of freedom, come on. You're painting them I, in a bad light. Did you just give me a movie from the other perspective. That's all I'm asking for. I ju- I, listen, I'm just asking questions. <laughs> That's all I'm doing. That's <laughs> all I'm doing. Oh, man. Yeah, <sighs> Taken 2. Uh, what a film. Yeah, well, I mean... Uh, let, I said in the plot rundown, the the antagonist uh, is the the dad of the guy who was, I guess he used to be head of the the, the kidnapping outfit. I mean, because he wasn't he he kidnapped the girls and sold them, but I mean he wasn't the head of the the criminal family that was running the whole shebang. Um, but because uh, Liam Neeson, spoiler alert, uh, stuck a couple of railroad spikes through the guy's legs and tacked into a chair hooked up to an electrical current and, you know, basically left the lights on until his heart exploded. The father feels like he is, uh, been wronged and needs to take out, uh, you know, a blood oath revenge for his son who kidnapped unsuspecting tourist women and sold them into slavery. I'm sorry. Real quick. That's how Liam Neeson kills the bad guy in the first one. Well, that's how he kill that, that. That's how he kills the guy who kidnapped his daughter. He continues to kill after that because there's oh. other bad guys in the way of him getting to his daughter. But Jesus. there's it's, it's an amazing interrogation scene. Um, the North American film uh, cut of this gave uh, where he just he just attached like uh, battery cable diodes to the guy and did it. But in the European far superior cut, he actually rammed a couple of spikes through the guy's uh, quadriceps and hooked him up to the electrical juice. Is this like the R-rated cut? Because I know Taken, all of these movies are PG-13. Oh yeah, no, that was this one's. That one's definitely uh, got a. Gotcha. Is it's the unrated, I guess, version. But the European Can- cut, as I've been been told. I, I want to ask you a question because again, I don't remember. I don't think I've seen the first one, and if I do, I don't remember a single thing except his particular set of skills that he t- mentions in the trailer eight hundred. Which times. is yeah, it's really kind of a, a meme or a trope at this point. Yeah, yeah, I kind of know because it's in the Everything. world. Yeah. <laughs> um, but my question is, okay, 
because the action scenes in this movie are shot terribly. Like, right. you can't tell, and it's not, and it's not even like, like I look back at like Born Identity, and I know you there can was say a it, all Albanians of, look alike, Brendan. I that's that's what you're getting at. I, no, I could tell who I was looking at. I just mean like, it, it, like I look back at like Born Identity and like movies like that. Where I look back and I'm like, oh, it was like shot in a different way, but it wasn't shot poorly. It was just shot like with kinetic kind of editing. But this is like, there's no like geography of where you are at any given moment. And I mean, I'm assuming it has a lot to do with Liam Neeson being a man that doesn't actually move like this. I mean, there's a famous shot in this one or the next one. Spoiler alert if I've ruined the next one where he's climbing a fence. And I think there's like 12 edits that's of like, the that's the next one, I believe. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah it, it just <laughs> I'm he's assuming, running from the cops. Yeah, like I'm assuming that's what ha- like this director does not know how to shoot an action scene. Like it, it every, every hand to hand combat scene is awful. No, the uh, the first one is is definitely much better put together. Um, from a story from. You know the 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 filming itself, everything. The second one is fun, but it's very. This is very samey. Um, like I said, we've got the even got like you know the same same idea. They go to a a European um, city. They get taken, and they have to fight against um, Albanian gangsters to save someone. <laughs> right, that's and the it- same thing. The the stand up and cheer line, of course, is when Liam Neeson calls his daughter and says, uh, dar- "Darling, we're about to be. Your mother and I are about to be taken." He says that in the first one. Does he? Yeah, because when he call he calls like the I I, I hate the word the second the good one, but when she arrives in Paris, her and her friend are in this thing in this this apartment, and it's got like a it's it's got like a courtyard view, so you can see across the courtyard to the other side of the apartment sort of thing. And she's talking on the phone and she sees her friend get grabbed by the, uh, Al- you know, the Albanian gangsters. And she's on the phone with, with her dad. And, and he says, he says to her, I don't want to alarm you, but you're about to be taken. <laughs> so. Yeah, it just it it was just funny. I, I would have liked if he, I think it, it it would have been more on the nose in this one if he had called her and said, "Your mother's been taken, and I'm going to be taken too." Ah, uh, and then and then he slowly looked at the camera and he's like, "Right, guys, right." right. And then Mariah broke your ribs. Yeah, I died that night. <laughs> yeah, and and it's. Yeah, that 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 line's wild. There's 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 so much stuff in this movie. I mean, my eyes went into the back of my brain. <laughs> <laughs> so much eye rolling. <laughs> so much eye rolling. Um, um yeah. I mean, the movie starts out, you know, innocently enough where, you know, uh the the daughter has uh she seemed to recover decently from being kidnapped and force-fed drugs and almost sold into forced prostitution doing pretty well gonna take her driver's test um and she's got a boyfriend which i mean i i don't know i, I can't speak to that kind of trauma but i've i have i'm from it's from my understanding that people who have been through stuff like that have a real hard time uh forming you know intimate relationships afterwards yeah, I thought about that too to the point where I was kind of angry that Liam Neeson came and broke that up cuz I'm like let her fuck. <laughs> yeah, like, cuz she's clearly getting better now. <laughs> yeah, like let her have her nor- let her have a somewhat normal life. And then like she even makes a, a reference to like or or he makes a reference to like he found it because of the GPS on her phone and I'm like, dude, I know you saved her. But it's it's almost like he's gonna like every time he talks to her, he, he's like, you know, are you gonna meet me at two? And she's like, oh, I really can't. He's like, oh no, it's cool. Like I, you remember when I just saved your life and shit? It's no, it's whatever <laughs> though. I I actually full disclosure, there were points where at the first year when he's talking about the the steps that he's taking, uh, or the step that 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 he's taken, mm. uh, to to pres- like preserve her safety, was due to what happened to her. Not even three years ago. And yeah. 
you know, he and when he says, she says, how did you find me? And he's like, the, I put uh, the GPS I put on your phone. And she's all like, what? Really? And he's like, "For if I were him, I'd be like, yeah, you were kidnapped and nearly sold into prostitution. I need to know where you are. I have a right to worry. But I also feel, though, like in this, in the you, world. You are everything they talk about on Fox News without any evidence. <laughs> But in the in the world of in the world though, if something like this was to happen, this crazy thing that happened in the first one, I know this movie negates my point twice because it's a movie franchise. But like, how likely is the same thing to happen again? <laughs> it's like it it. it in all fairness, it doesn't happen to her again. Well, there's three movies. It starts to make me think like maybe he's the problem. <laughs> Like, well, there's something he's attracting a certain certain type of person, and may, maybe he needs to go live in isolation with the monks for a while or something. Full disclosure: in the first movie, he gave the gangsters an absolute option to just walk away. There had already been too much bloodshed, too much violence. Just walk away, and they didn't. And then he did the same thing at the end of this movie to the father. And he's like, look, I'm tired of this. I don't want to kill you, man. Just walk away. Don't kill me. Your son was a pile of garbage. I hate to say that because he's your son, but he was a human trash bag. Mm -hmm. Let's just call it a push. I'll walk away with my wife and kid because or my ex-wife and kid because they're safe and sound. You go home to your other sons because you have other sons and other grandkids, and let's just just walk our separate ways and leave it at that. And the dude can't even do that. No, and then he gets his face squished to death. No, he gets impaled. Is that what happened? Because they didn't show it. They just showed him pushing him. And, and you see, and when Liam Neeson at the end, when he's walking out of the uh, that that Turkish bath, there's there are like uh, there are rods hanging up to hang your towels on. See, I and, just <laughs> yeah, he got. He got he got fucking pie faced into one of those. I missed that. He didn't just that. get pie faced to death. I I missed that, and all I thought was that he just squashed his face with his hand, and I'm like, wow, that's a tough motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, maybe they didn't take it serious him seriously in the first one because Liam Neeson is an aged man. Even in the first one, it's yep. like he's like a, he's just like a sad dad. He's like a sad dad with CIA training. <laughs> well, yeah, because he's he's retired even when the first movie starts. You know what? I, I vaguely remember something about the first movie now. Doesn't like the daughter's friend get killed, but she gets taken? Yes, she yeah. No, they both get taken at the same time, but the her friend dies in captivity. Right, cuz you got to have one die so that the threat is taken seriously. Right. <laughs> um yeah, I don't know. It, 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 so, did you notice? <laughs> did you notice the little shout out to uh, the little kowtowing to China in the middle of this movie or at the beginning of this movie? They're they're quickly just like, Famke Jansen is like, yeah, we were gonna go to China for spring break, and I'm like, China? That's oh a yeah, her her husband was gonna take them on like a because they really wanted to work out their marriage and and because it's they're going through some rough stuff. Yeah, I just thought that was a interesting choice of place to go for spring break <laughs> it it feels very much like when um like it's like uh when skyscraper is set in china i'm like oh okay sure it, like i mean you would think given you know the buildings in dubai <laughs> <sighs> yeah you think they would set skyscraper there but but i mean movies make a lot of money there i get it i get yeah. it <laughs> just like the idea i just like the idea of like throwing that in real quick we got to make sure we get distribution there what can we so what can we throw in there yeah <laughs> It's like, hey. They should have went to ti China. That's that's the that's the the really that's the point we're driving home with this movie. Well, then again, if they went to China, maybe they wouldn't get a release because they would show how dangerous it is. And China's like, no, no, no. This is a happy place full of all no. happy people. It's peaceful and no one gets hurt. What I mean is that um, that Lenny and Kim and Stewart, I think the guy's name is, if if, if Stewart had kept his word, because he's a scumbag through and through. Mm -hmm. uh, more on that next week. You, uh, if they had gone to China, they wouldn't have been anywhere near Constantinople, and uh, it would have just been Liam Neeson who would have been taken and fought off the Albanian gangsters. Yeah. So. 
I, I think that's the draw. You know, China is a safer place than Constantinople. Not Istanbul? No, not Istanbul. Oh, okay. So, because the whole thing is they're going to go on, the, the daughter and wife are going to go on spring break in China, and the stepdad basically <laughs> cancels the trip and fucks them over. So he's like, well, come with come with me. I don't know why I keep doing the accent. He's not doing the accent in the movie. He's like, well, It's come. slight. You can still hear it. <laughs> Come with me to Istanbul. And uh, they're like, yeah, sure, why not? And then when they show up there and they're at the hotel, um, I, I get that Liam Neeson's looking around because he's suspicious of this one guy. But if yeah. you didn't know who he was, it would just look like he was racial profiling everyone because he keeps looking <laughs> at, like, the people from the country with, like, side eyes. And it's like, oh, this old man is just going to fucking complain that he let those people in the hotel. Which is funny because he was actually finishing up a um, a security detail for an Islamic Shah. In the first one? No, in the second one. That's why he was in Istanbul. Um, oh, wait, hold on. Something else. Isn't the first one he's guarding like a pop star? That, yes, that does happen, but it's more of a bookend story. Maybe I have seen parts of the first movie. I just am remembering little bits here and there. <laughs> um... Of course, we get the the scene with the CIA buddies, which we had that in the first one, and we have their these cameos for these guys in the, in this one here. And I remember at the time seeing them again in this movie and going, "Man, why can't they just make a like a, a movie where you know these guys are like the A team?" Of course, this was before the A team came out, and Liam Neeson was actually fucking Hannibal. Uh, why can't they make a movie like A Team where these guys are all working together? Unbeknownst to me, I should have uh, been careful what I wish for. More on that next week. Okay. Um, I did like how their 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 group is very catty. There's there's one part where one of them goes, "Oh, don't go there, friend." Oh uh, yes, because... and you know the original line was, "Don't go there, girlfriend." It had to be. <laughs> that would have been great. But they're very much like, oh, are you going to get back with Lenny? Well, I don't know. Well, d- g- girl. <laughs> no, he gets fed up with it. goes, can't we just talk about basketball? Yeah. And they're like, uh-uh. Everyone take out their <laughs> books. <laughs> there wasn't their, uh, oh, fuck with them. The, their burn books. There yeah, their burn book. They're, they're, t- they're all talking about their crushes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, of course, uh, Lenny and Kim, they go to... Uh, Constantinople and uh, the first night there uh, Liam Neeson gets to go on this like daddy daughter date with Kim and give her this European slash Asian history about how one side is Europe the other side is Asia and every war since time immemorial uh, has been has been fought and this is the nexus point yeah it's a it's a because I, I, I that's I, what I do when I when I have my girls and we go out for stuff. I, I sit around and I talk about how St. John almost burned to the ground. Mm. And, you know, how, you know, mm. in, in, in Quebec, uh, Frontenac said he'd reply with the mouth of his cannon. Because, you know what, if it's one thing that, uh, you know, uh, late teen uh, young adult women love is when their dads talk to them about, uh, you know, historical war situations. Very true. Also, this date was too romantic for my likes. Liking, they certainly could have uh, ch- picked a different musical cue. That's for sure. <laughs> there was weird. There was a weird vibe throughout this whole thing. And you know, I think the mu- the music didn't do any didn't didn't do it any favors. But when he like he asked her if she you know if she wanted a tea, and he orders her a tea, and he gives it to her, and he kind of sits back and puts the old arm around her, and I'm like, all right, movie, just be careful. <laughs> Okay, just you're treading a very fine line right now. The big twist is that uh, Brian Mills has fallen in with human traffickers. <laughs> you know what? I thought about it, and uh, they, they, they're not so bad. You know, you just got to really talk to them to understand them. It's, you know, it's not, <laughs> See it's where not they're a, coming from. It's not, it's not a black and white situation here, guys. I mean, I talked to the guy who, uh, that I killed's father, and he really opened my eyes. I did say I felt that this whole scene with them on the boat was guest directed by J.J. Abrams. Oh, the solar flares? Oh, constantly in this scene. (laughs) 
Yeah, this is like that moment in uh, Sin City where Quentin Tarantino directs that one scene. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I did like that. Um, as far as like set deck goes in this movie, they were definitely trying to achieve that. I don't know, grimy old world aesthetic. And I think they got a lot of it down just right. Like when you go into that, like that abandoned building hotel situation where the bad guys are staying, I was like, this thing looks like this is, this is perfect. They nailed this just right. It's a shame that it was followed by fight scenes that you couldn't see hardly anything. I know, like, yeah, this the the location that they're shooting in, the this, like you said, the set deck, the production design is just wasted because, yeah. again, not only is there no sense of geography during the fight scenes, there's no real sense of geography like where where the characters are in general. Like, I know right. we're supposed to be a little bit lost too, but I mean, it, it's almost it's almost like you're you're almost dizzy at that point. Well, I mean, a really good example is that like that climactic uh, car chase or taxi chase which i noted a taxi chase and luke besson associated movie get right out <laughs> not, uh, not when, possible when kim is driving and and you know uh, liam neeson's doing the shooting and stuff like that if you almost feel like they're just driving around the same blocks forever yeah. until they finally get to the u.s embassy that i i i wrote down that car chase is no bullet <laughs> <laughs> No, not at all. It's also super slow. I get for a lot because she crashes into stuff and like she's trying to get the car going again, or she's grinding up against the 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 police cruisers as she's trying to get away to go in another direction. Yeah, like I can't point to like the exact factor that makes car chase scenes good, but I just know I've seen so many bad ones. <laughs> well, the thing with the, with a car chase scene, it's okay to have those close up things like when you're doing those hairpin turns and stuff like that but uh like you said you mentioned bullet you have to have some wider shots yeah. of the cars you know jockeying for position so that you can get kind of a sense of how big the city is where they're at in it mm-hmm. with this it just seems like they were turning like i said the st- around the same four corners over and over and over again until all of a sudden, okay, well, we've turned, we've done it, we've got enough footage, let's get into the U.S. Embassy now. Kept going to the same four corners over and over again. What was Liam Neeson trying to win a strap match, babe? Babe. <laughs> Thanks, Dennis. Got wrestling reference secured, okay? So, okay. You got it, yep. <laughs> Thanks, Dennis. Drink. No, 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 don't leave your MAGA papers here. We're not interested. Oh, come up, babe. Just give them a read. <laughs> With an open mind. You know, I heard they're thinking the frog's gay. Oh, boy. He's really falling in with the bad ones now. <laughs> um, Okay, so... Kim, the daughter in the first movie, is... Taken. Taken. Completely innocent. She has no particular set of skills whatsoever. In this movie, she is basically... uh, Well, I mean... She's she's his Obi-Wan. Qui-Gon Jinn uh, is training his Padawan of, of Obi-Wan Kim Nobi. Ah, there you go. To, uh, to, to help him, you know, escape and find her mom with zero regard to other people's property. She blows up a car and starts, she's hucking flashbang grenades all over the place just so he can get a, you know, a, a, a sense of distance from the sound. That was absolutely insane starting <laughs> off with when they're taken and uh, when Liam Neeson and, and uh, Famke Jansen are in the back seat and he is like counting until the turns and then the funniest thing though so he's counting until the turns which I'm like okay fine whatever but then <laughs> at one point he listens and he goes birds I'm like what that's Bolt. not like a, that's metal on metal yeah man playing man <laughs> playing violin or but something I'm like birds the birds could be any fucking way yeah, it's it's a seaport town it's not like the birds are confined to a giant cage in the city <laughs> uh this that scene however did uh remind me that we need to cover the movie sneakers someday oh that's a, isn't that a good movie though i i mean i don't know i i'd heard I, i've i've heard it doesn't have the most stellar reputation i'm gonna really? look that up right now 80 percent Nathan. 
Is it really? Yeah. That's strange. Oh, like it's so it's fresh both. <laughs> both. Both, yeah, both at eighty percent actually. Okay. For some reason, I I I had uh, I had I was under the impression that it did not have a good legacy. Uh, Sidney Poitier yells at someone in that movie and calls them a motherfucker. I think there's no way it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Samuel Jackson saw that movie and says, I got an idea. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's getting old. I could take that, right? <laughs> um, uh, there was, when Kim is trying to, like, uh, she's running uh, across the rooftops. Uh, so Liam, like, I'm throwing flashbangs so that. She's throwing uh, grenades. And then when she throws it. He counts until he can hear it. He's like, okay, draw a circle on a map. And then draw another right. circle. Where do the circles meet? Two points. And uh, Kim, Go can to you, the most eastern point. Can you build the a Lego? Because in the wind, blowing to the east. Kim, build a Lego house. Insert four <laughs> brick tiles. Now, on your left, there will be two pens, a red and a blue one. Crisscross them. Do you see any paper? What? <laughs> <laughs> Dad, did you have a stroke? Have they, did they beat you? Have you are you like a brain bleed or something? His instructions are so complex. And then later he says, um, before they get taken, I remember he says to his wife, to Femke Jansen, he's like, get out of the car. Go left. You're going to take a right at the end. And then you're going to go left again. Follow the road. Yeah, a red corridor. Yeah, red corridor. And then go right. And then jump back in. And I'm like, slow down. Write it down. Didn't matter anyways, because unbeknownst to him, they had installed a door with a padlock. <laughs> it's right. It's just so. Uh, when, but when Kim is running across, uh, this is a quote, and she's running across the rooftops, yeah. and she's being chased by the the gangsters. She does this thing where she jumps to another uh, roof, but she's so sl- she's so slight that she makes the jump. The other guy follows her and gets an ECW barbed wire clothesline. That was. I brutal. was like, that's the most brutal thing in this movie. <laughs> Yeah, and he doesn't die. He like land. It, something breaks his fall. Yeah, he's like, bah! and he yeah, he falls on like I don't know, like an apple cart or something. I feel like if you were coming at that that fast and that hard, that would kill you. Yeah, or at the you know at the very least, you know, you'd slit your throat, you'd die on the way down. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> I also noted that Kim is never going to Europe ever again. Oh, I after this. sure fucking hope not. <laughs> yeah, and even. Even you know if she if she grows up to get married and they you know she has a, a honeymoon and the husband asks, well, I've always wanted to to you know to summer in France. No, not France. No. Yeah, she just okay. Well, maybe, maybe we should go. We could we could uh, you know we could we could take a tour in Germany. No, I'm never going to Europe ever again. As if she just turns around and shoots him immediately. Yeah, <laughs> so, I, I told I you. Find another one. <laughs> Told you I didn't want to go. <laughs> oh. oh, man! I did. I did find the the, the it uh a, that funny beat where they actually do get to the U.S. embassy, and they crash the gate, and you know, of course, the <laughs> U.S. military has been gunning down the car. It hasn't hit either one of them. Mm-hmm. And uh, Brian calls his friend Sam and says, "Hey." We're uh we're in a taxi outside the U.S. Embassy. Can you call somebody to make sure we don't get shot? And he's like, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, man, no problem. And then he hangs up. He's like, it's Brian. He's in he's in trouble in Istanbul. <laughs> <laughs> like this happens. Like it's fucking Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. You, you know that thing. You know that the uh, thing that always happens is yeah, deal with it. It's fine. Whatever. <laughs> Um. So oh. you, so she's literally like, like you, like you stated earlier. She's not, like uh, I mean, she's she's not she's in good shape and everything, and she's like young. But I mean, she's not a, she's not has any training. She's, she's not a right. fighter, and she's just jumping rooftops like nobody's business. <laughs> and and it's not even a situation where in the first movie she kind of was like pushed into it or had to defend herself or something like that. He 100% rescues her, period. Unless there there is some sort of th- thrown away dialogue where he has been helping her with self defense techniques and 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 teaching her some of his particular set of skills, mm-hmm. she should not know how to do any of this. <laughs> no, it, it, it's <laughs> especially the driving of the stick shift. They should have called the movie "Lady Taken." 
<laughs> Although I, I just la- I laughed every time he was like, now get another grenade and throw it. <laughs> like, stop getting your fucking daughter to throw grenades in the middle of the town square. You're clearly creating an international incident. She blew up a car. <laughs> And and likely there were deaths that we just didn't see. He's like, I remember he's like, the movie wants you to know that no one's getting hurt specifically because they have him go, there's no one down there, right? And she's like, nope, all clear. I'm like, you don't know that. <laughs> it Regardless of that, she she may have blown up that car and no one was on that, that uh, you know, rooftop of the, uh, of the parking garage. But I feel that when she was running across rooftops, just hucking grenades left, right, and center off the roofs. There were people down below. Yeah. Knocked out their Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's yeah, that was it. Less at least was their worries. Yeah. I, I also found it interesting, uh, because at one point when he is actually being held, they bring in uh Lenny, Benka Jensen, and uh they give her like a, a little cut on her neck. Not they don't cut her throat, but they just give her this little cut on the neck. That's going to make her bleed. And they hang her upside down, which, of course, is going to continue to bleed um, until she kind of drowns in her own blood. Thankfully, don't worry, guys. Everyone was OK this time. And uh, he gets uh, he gets down and frees her, takes the bag off her. A surprising lack of blood on her face when he takes that bag off of her and tries to revive her. Yeah, I mean, that's I mean, that's the PG-13 pitfall, too. I this guess. movie is pretty, pretty tame. I think it's it's pretty dry in terms of like, especially for, I don't know. I feel like if you're making a big action movie like Taken, if you're gonna PG thirteen it, then then shoot some decent fight scenes, and if you're not, then at least go full hog and put some gore in there. It's definitely tamer than the first one because, like I said, you've got that. Uh that interrogation scene and of course the whole thing does revolve around human trafficking whereas this one here is just like some guy who whose son was a human trafficker who's dead don't worry guys he's dead the bad guy is already dead he he's just out for revenge no one's getting human trafficked and uh we'll we'll try to keep the blood to a minimum you know that this is this is totally the movie and in, in a multiverse situation Nathan this would be and I said it, maybe I said it before. This would be Sound of Freedom. <laughs> or at least the first one would be. And it would be Jim Caviezel saying he's got a very particular set of skills. <laughs> and what particular set of skills are those, Jim? Well, I know all the Harold Marys back and forth. And uh, I'm pretty sure that, uh, that uh, they put uh, 5G transmitters in the vaccine. Yeah, and let me tell you about Hillary Clinton's blood libel cult. No, I think we're good, Jim. No, we're good, Jim. We're good, buddy. Maybe, maybe we just shoot this scene. <laughs> are you sure because i've got some pamphlets no put them away and, and can and can we cut it down on the improv jim i mean i know you're ta- you're a very talented actor but i don't think using your real views in this role is really what we want nowhere's in the script does it say anything about adrenochrome jim so just <laughs> knock it off <laughs> on the set of passion of the christ does jesus have to quote QAnon in this scene i mean <laughs> Then again, Mel Gibson was directing it, so he's probably like, can we do that? Can oh, we do I that? like it. Add it. <laughs> <laughs> Add it. Add more. I, I want to point out that there's a, there's a moment where um, they all, almost all of the bad guys go looking for Brian Mel's daughter because their whole plan is to gather them all up and then obviously kill them. But Oh, at, at the hotel where he shoots some guy. <laughs> did he did that character get credited as some guy in the credits because i really I, I think it'd be awesome if he did i don't know this is he he's famous like a couple years from now it is like one of his first credits is taken to some guy <laughs> yeah maybe um but but the fact is that all the bad guys leave just to go get the daughter except for one dumbass that they leave in charge of Liam Neeson and Famke Jansen. And I'm like, really? You know what he did to your son and all these people in the first movie? And you're like, ah, let's leave Jim Bob in charge. He's he. I, I think he'll be fine. I mean, he's the guy. He's chained up. He doesn't have a particular set of skills or anything. Enemy? Did he? Did he find a way to use a cell phone? Sure, but I mean that fucking mini spy phone <laughs> killed me. I laughed so hard when he did. And even the the thing where he was uh, when he was talking uh, to the the vengeful dad. Um, 
that's my wrestler name too, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he used the line that the guy's kid used on him in the first, where where he was like, "Good luck." Oh. Yeah, I was like, "Oh, I see what you're doing, movie. Just referencing the way better <laughs> one that came before this one." I get you. I want. I kind of want to see Liam Neeson go back and make another Taken movie in about five or six years, where he's like really starting to show his age. And every time he does like his little, he takes out his little technology. He like has to put on his cheaters. <laughs> like he can't quite figure out. Hold on, hold like, on. I, I, I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get the settings here. This, I have this, a... the, the, the settings programming this thing. It's not one of my particular sets of skills. What I'm going to need you to do is to keep talking because I'm trying to record and trace this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and and Kim's there and she's like, oh, God, Dad, just give it to me. No, give it to me. Give it to me. Come on. No, just <laughs> hand. It no, I think I can do this, Kim. I need to do this. <laughs> keep throwing grenades. Dad, we have a tracker. <laughs> <laughs> there is a GPS in the car. You don't need to throw grenades to know where to pick me up at school. <laughs> or I guess uh, at that point, um, what work? Yeah, because <laughs> I, I, I think by the, I don't know. Yeah, she's she's done school by that time. I guess I think she was in her senior year when this one was uh, was all said and done. Yeah, I mean, after I almost became human trafficked, I don't know that school would be a huge priority for me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I also love the, f- when she, when she finally finds him, cause he had to leave Famke Jansen there, um, because he couldn't get her because the, that she had too many people around her and he goes like, Hey, you, I found you. And then she's like, where's mom? I kind of wanted him to be like, shit. I knew I forgot something. <laughs> <laughs> Mother fucker. <laughs> oh, damn it. Well, honey, uh, it was been a throw t- some more grenades. Uh, I'll be back. <laughs> oh, I was thinking he's like, it's been a hell of a run. Let's go. <laughs> Which, I mean, yeah. More on that next week. Oh, <laughs> uh, I know. Oh, I I know. that's coming. Which is one of those sequel things that annoys me. But we'll get there. Uh, it was bullshit. There's so much bullshit I have to say about. I got all pent up for next week. Take it uh, three uh, next week, or should I say take that's, three and take three and not Tekken, but uh, let's um, never. Let's never. Of course, again. we have to. <laughs> what's that? Oh, it's a Tekken. Let's never again. Okay, uh, of course we have to relive the sneaker scene when he has to when he goes back because he does like you said. Oh shit! I forgot your mom. <laughs> I gotta go back and find her. And he's he's basically he goes back to where they were taken, and then he does the whole thing where he drives and he counts and he does the boat and then the birds and then the metal on the metal and the the dude playing the the the, the violin and miraculously he finds where she is. And, you know, g- kills a bunch of Albanians. Yeah, thankfully, everyone was in the exact same place that they were when they when they were taken a while back. <laughs> right. Uh, of course, he rescues her. He has that. He does have. There is the, the final, not the fight between the him and the, the vengeful dad, but the, um, the there is that, that 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 bit of a fight with I guess he would be like the underling the right hand man of the vengeful dad. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's a pretty decent little fight scene. But then the last thing that showdown with vengeful dad is super anticlimactic. Yeah, because they just have that exchange and and then he fucking pie faces the guy into a pillar. To which again I thought he just squished his face to death. I also <laughs> thought that was I I, I wrote down as like. I mean, I know you said this kind of happens in the first one, but I wrote down as like, really, Liam Neeson? Do you think he's just gonna mend his ways? <laughs> right. He's taken a blood oath. Yeah. He's like, do you promise not to hurt me? And you'll never. <laughs> I'll put my gun down, <laughs> and I'll just walk away. And you'll never do it again. Promise, pinky swear. <laughs> Make a god promise. I mean, to be fair, he does. Uh... Uh, take the bullets out of the gun. Right, because he's not an idiot. But then it's funny when the guy uses the gun and it clicks and Liam Neeson's like, he almost looks like like inconvenience, like, oh, I've got to kill you now, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and, I don't know, it's like, he almost seems, like, they don't put it in there, but it would have been great if he had just said, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. <laughs> And then fucking pie-faced him into the pillar. Just like a... <laughs> like, 
mildly <laughs> inconvenienced <laughs> father. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then, then that's it. It's ta- fa- fast forward three weeks later, and and Kim passes her driving test because yay, that's not the most f- ridiculously big thing that she's had to overcome in the last little while. And they have ice cream with her boyfriend. Um, that boyfriend is somebody, isn't he? Um, he sure is. Uh, Luke something. Uh, Did I get that right? Is it Lucas Gage? think so uh, i want to point out um uh, the best cameo though at the end is her driving instructor is lunel aka borat's wife yes <laughs> loved seeing her show up i knew i knew her from somewhere yeah i was like oh it's lunel and then um well my question is maybe this is common practice in the, in the united states i don't know but when when you did your driving test and you were parallel parking they didn't put an actual car behind you did they no, and I also want to take this movie to task. When he's teaching her how to parallel park, she doesn't have to parallel park. No. She just backs into a parking spot. That's the other thing, too. I was like, fuck you. I actually had to parallel park with something in front of me and behind me. Yeah, I didn't. They I, When I did mine, uh, it was it was pylons with broomsticks sticking out. Yeah, pylons. Because I, they're not going to make you do that on a street. Yeah, exactly. Because you could damage somebody's car if you don't know how to do it. Yeah, because the person giving the test has no idea how much experience you have. Exactly. Luke Grimes, by the way. Luke Grimes. Was the, was the fellow who was the was the, the boyfriend right. for a, a cup of coffee in the, this movie. The brother of uh, Grimes, the former... Uh, Frank Grimes from The Simpsons. <laughs> oh, I, I was like Grimes, Elon Musk's ex-girlfriend. Oh, I thought you were gonna say Cameron Grimes from NXT, who recently got released. No, no, not yeah. not uh, not Cameron Grimes, unfortunately. But maybe one day. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I th- I... he'll be his brother at some point. <laughs> right. If you the, just the father of Cameron Grimes will marry the mother of Luke Grimes. <laughs> And they will be stepbrothers, even though Cameron Grimes isn't his real name. If you just believe, it might happen. Right. Um, I I want to mention that uh, <laughs> it is like the most, like it's almost parody level how happy they are at the end. When they're all sitting right. there, literally, like you said, eating ice cream, the boyfriend's there, which Liam Neeson gives a quick like, oh, I don't know. Well, okay. And they just kind of sit there. I mean, kudos to the movie for Let's not- Let's go for frosty chocolate milkshakes. <laughs> At least kudos to the movie for not having him uh, find out something about the boyfriend, and then he has to beat him up and stuff. And <laughs> He's like, what? That last name. Is it Albanian? <laughs> Oh, fucking Brian Mills just racist towards Albanians. <laughs> Goddamn Albanians. Or Luke Grimes' character turns out to be like third cousin twice removed from the guy he killed in the first one. And he is also sworn a blood oath. Oh, and man. there is a huge action set piece fight right there at the Santa Monica Pier. Well, a blood oath twice removed anyway. Right. Which is like, you know, it's it's like a scab oath. So I mean, what he he wants to he he just wants to like maybe like I don't know make Brian Mills stub his toe, but and and Brian Mills still like resists and and ends up killing him. <laughs> right. I was just trying to kick you in the shin. You will never touch my shin, boy. <laughs> Goddamn Albanians, Brian. Brian, what? Calm down, man. What a dumb fucking name for a Liam Neeson character. <laughs> Brian Mills. Brian. You get an awesome name like Liam Neeson and you're playing Brian Mills. And he's supposed that I get it. Okay, he's got a particular set of skills and he 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 prides himself on living like kind of under the radar. But I mean, your name doesn't have to be super under the radar. I'm not saying it has to be like Flex Hard Cheese or, you know, Big Mick Large Huge or something like that. Yeah. But Brian Mills, he sounds like an accountant. Right. Yeah. He just sound. Yeah. I. I. I guess. I guess maybe that's the. And maybe that's the idea to make him sound not threatening. Because in the first one, it's supposed to be a surprise, right? That he's like, to to everyone well, like else. He's activated when his kid gets taken. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not a surprise to the audience who would have seen the trailer and read the premise. But I mean. <laughs> And be like, shit, yeah, I want to see Liam Neeson kill a bunch of Europeans. They're like, wait, 
he's going to kill them? I thought this was just going to be a movie where he was going to call the authorities and await the due process. <laughs> he was going to get her back. There was going to be negotiations. A ransom drop-off may happen. Yeah, just like in uh, yeah, like that scene in Fargo where the old man goes and like t- drops off the briefcase and gets fucking shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, let's, you got any other things uh, you want to take this movie to task on? I mean, I don't think so. I just, the, it's just, uh, the PG-13, Liam Neeson PG-13 shooting his way to Lenore is not that interesting, I wrote down. I all, I did find it funny that the, um, that the staff at the hotel in Istanbul, uh, s- spoke English when it kind of served convenient for the watcher, because there was a point where when they shoot that, you know, some guy. Mm-hmm. And the the chambermaid sees them trying to escape, and she sees they got a gun, and she grabs her little walkie-talkie, and she says, "Security, this floor, we've got you know an incident." Words to that effect, in English, but with like almost a French accent. And then later, when Kim is trying to escape, she goes down to like you know the employee uh, locker room area and steals clothes. I mean, that's our hero. She steals clothes, steals clothes out of some woman's locker. And there's one of the chamber mages there and she's yelling at her in her native tongue. Those aren't your clothes. Get back here. Stop thief. (laughs) Yeah. But I feel like if Luke Besson had, 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 you know, hand in the direction, those people would have spoken in their, their native tongue. And we would have had to read those parts Uh, all the way through. Oh my God, Nathan! I know I've, I've been doing this lately. Uh, every now and then, I see a little, a few interesting things about this movie. I, I want to interesting tidbits. Interesting tidbits. Um, I want to call your attention to, to a couple things here. Um, this should not surprise you. This movie was shot as an R-rated movie, but then edited down to PG-13. Doesn't surprise me in the least. This movie, they weren't sure if Liam Neeson was going to return a hundred percent. And you know who was considered as the replacement? Ray Stevenson. Mickey Rourke. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh, that's so much better than my guess. <laughs> um, there really isn't anything. I love that some of the trivia is so obvious. It's like one of the pieces of trivia is like, in this movie, it is Kim who rescues her parents this time. That's not trivia. That's just the plot. <laughs> Uh, body count. And I mean, she just aids in the rescue. I mean, really, Brian rescues himself. Yeah. Uh, body count 30, by the way. Which is... It's, are, are they counting the people who probably would have died when she threw the grenades off the roof? Uh, no, counting that 782. Okay. <laughs> Getting Man of Steel levels here. Yeah, yeah. The third one, I'm assuming, is all about the collateral damage that they did. Now the whole town wants to kill them. <laughs> oh... Nope. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm, I'm not You're looking be forward so upset. to it. But no, I don't. I don't have anything else to say about this movie. I'm just trying to think. Of, if he hadn't returned, what could they have just shot another retread of the first movie, but made it about one of his CIA, CIA buddies? His, his dog gets taken. <laughs> or like I said, just but one of his CIA buddies is in the same situation because those characters, when they introduce them in the first one and in this one. I find them kind of, you know, they're they're there's a bit of mystique about them. Like you said, they're kind of catty and stuff. But I mean, if they're anything like Liam Neeson with his particular set of skills, I'd love to see these guys like DB Sweeney and the other dudes putting their stuff to work for that. They we don't we get none of that, and you know, I'm, we're going to be sorely let down next week. Spoiler alert. Well, and so. and and when you say, and I'm sure everyone's wondering this, just like I am, when you say a little bit of mystique, do you mean like Jennifer Lawrence or Rebecca Romaine? Definitely Rebecca Romaine because okay. they're older. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. well, there you go. All right. Well, I guess that's it. That's uh, take some of my notes out of here. Yeah. Get out. Get out of here, you testicle. All right. Brendan. Yeah. Would you say that this movie is worth a watch? A drunk watch with friends. Would you attempt head trauma to forget it or avoid it like the plague? I would honestly attempt head trauma to forget it. I, I don't think it's all that fun. Um, the part with the grenades is pretty stupid and silly. And there there are like a couple moments, but the fight scenes are so aggressively bad. And it's just, it's so, 
a, just a retread. Uh, and I, and again, I don't remember the first one, but it, you can even tell it's a retread just by not even by watching the first one. It's, it feels like they're doing the same thing, but slightly different. Like it doesn't, it's, it's like kind of pointless. So yeah. Mm-hmm. What about you? Uh, I'm putting it uh, squarely in my drunk watch with friends camp because I have actually drunkenly watched this with friends. So, I mean, I to put it anywhere else would seem uh, disingenuous. That's fair. That's fair. All right. So there we go. That's that's our take on Taken 2. Taken 2. More like Taken it's a 2 stamp. on this movie. Still got it. <laughs> taken 2 is Stam Boogaloo. <laughs> uh, we are going to take a brief break, uh, but don't touch that dial because stuff has dials still. Uh, we will be right back. This episode is brought to you by Twizzlers. Long day, late night, feeling a little bored. Twizzlers is the ultimate sidekick for any moment of the day, no matter what kind of day you're having. The perfect level of sweet and a fun excuse to sit back and relax. Unwind with Twizzlers. To buy now, visit Hersheyland.com slash Twizzlers. Three great words. Free Fries Friday. Especially when they're used in that exact order. Get a free medium fries with $1 minimum purchase. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Valid one time on Fridays at participating McDonald's through 1231.24. Excludes tax must opt into rewards. And we're back. We were not taken. We're still here. No, no, we are still here. You do not need a particular set of skills mm. to enjoy this portion of our broadcast. Uh, which is affectionately known as the low haiku. But the rest of the now, podcast, you do need a particular set of skills to enjoy. Right. Um, uh, specifically ones to deal with our bullshit and uh, an extensive knowledge of pop culture and wrestling. I hope the censors are ready for that one. Jeepers, creepers. Well, uh, I'm I'm reading the copy and I'm just reading what's put in front of me like Ron Berg. Sure, sure, so. sure. That's understandable. Um, but no, it is time for the low haiku. Brendan, would you be so kind as to tell the folks at home in case, just in case this is their very first episode of what were they thinking, what the low haiku is all about? Well, you get yourself a handful of syllables. Some say 17. It's been argued. Scholars have maintained that over the years. And uh, with those 17 syllables, uh, we break down the movie we just broke down for about an hour-ish. Okay, okay. And uh, Brandon, as I was the plot meister on this uh, this particular movie, uh, would you like to lead us off with your low IQ? Yes, I would. Mm. Mom and Dad taken. See, sequel is fresh, different, totally unique. Very good, very very good. Thank you. I I, I think mine uh may share a similar take. Oh. On on yours, if you <laughs> if you'll pardon that pun. I will. <clears throat> Writers did not have a particular set of skills to make this seem new. Thank you. Thank you. Very Thank good. You. Very good. Okay, and with that, we are going to juke Just go get on out. Uh, gotta get on. <clears throat> gotta get on out. All these worried trouble thoughts gotta get on out of my head. I just was gonna say gotta that I wanna rock on out of low haiku. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever works, baby. Eddie Grant, right. don't fail me now. <laughs> Oh, okay. So, well, you know what? Um, you know, we've we've kind of, you know, we've we've had our poems and we've we've had our say, but uh we don't want we don't want you guys to think that oh boy. that we're the, the the be all and end all when it comes to like, you know, your opinions and whatnot. Yeah. Uh I mean, there are a lot of uh, you know, Albanians oh boy. and um, you know, uh People of other religions in this movie. So I mean, I'm really, I'm really trying to get you guys to do your own research oh, in regards to the villains of this movie. Is. 
so much so, Brandon. I think that that we should we should tell them uh, in in a in a, a different way to use their particular set of skills, uh, uh, you know, to do their own research. And and what uh, is there a particular set of skills or a particular set of ways that you could say to our folks to to do their own research in regards to uh, this movie and and its villains jesus christ one of these days this intro is going to be an hour and a half uh <laughs> yeah i tell them uh to don't take a word for us That's right. Don't take our word for it. Now, Brendan, yeah. as we, we said before, the, the first movie is, is actually well-received. Uh, yeah, and is, Yeah, well, I mean, it's got uh, you know, a 60 with the critics and an 85 with the audience. So, I mean, sure. I think it's pretty decently received. So, they must have been like, yo, man, I want to see more of that. I love that, so I love this because it's pretty samey. What did the uh, what the folks think of this one? That is not, in fact, what the uh, what the critics thought because only twenty two percent of the one hundred and seventy three <sighs> critics uh, liked it. Oh, okay. But the audience, I mean, they're a little more forgiving. Anything with Liam Neeson in action is 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 bound to be baffled at the box office. Well, certainly not an eighty five. Uh, it turns out fifty two percent of the audience of over one hundred thousand ratings said yes. Take me, Liam. Take me now to Brown Town. Oh, goodness. Yeah. That was the quote. I'm just reading what it said. Um, but, Nathan, you'll be delighted to know that Rotten Tomatoes has seemingly brought back our favorite uh, section. Yay! But it's now called More Like This. But, I mean, if you liked Taken 2, yeah, you might I, you also just, like... Yeah, we're just going to keep it. If you yeah. like Taken 2, guess what? You might also like Taken. You might like Taken 3. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not, though. Maybe not. You might like, not the first one, but Transporter 2? Uh, the Transporter Refueled? Is that the non-Jason Statham one? Yeah. Okay. I'm sure it's Which great. Which I think is a TV show. <laughs> that you might also enjoy with a staggering 11% Alex Cross. Starring Tyler Perry. Cinematic auteur. Yeah. Action star Tyler Perry. <laughs> If, I wish he had put on the Medea suit just for one scene in that movie, like Big Mama's house or something. I mean, it couldn't have made it worse. <laughs> it would have only made it better if you asked me. All right. All right. Let's get let's, into the. Uh, let's, yeah, let's get these into these critics here critics, and see. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna get not gonna get into these critics, but we're gonna start reading some reviews mm. here. Um, let's see. Ba 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 ba. White guy noises. Michael Compton of Bowling Green Daily News. Remember that horrible shooting that happened? Where there? that massacre was, yeah. Yeah. This is a wildly absurd piece of cinema, so completely over the top and preposterous that it does manage to induce a bit of unintentional humor. Grade D. Okay. I I, I will admit, I, I was laughing pretty hardly when Kim was just hucking fucking grenades <laughs> left and right during this I mean, movie. It's, it's easily the best part. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, my boy... Ken Hankey from mm. the Mountain Express out of Asheville, North Carolina. Well, Cranky Hankey wrote, Unfortunately, and somewhat embarrassingly for the human race, there wow. appears to be a sizable market for movies as blitheringly idiotic as this. 1.5 out of 5. Holy moly, Ken. Now, well, now you know why they called him Cranky Hankey. <laughs> Indeed. Well, if you're going to call on Ken Hankey, I'm going to call on a surprising uh, word from my boy Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times, who actually says the cast is uniformly capable and dead serious, and if you're buying what Luke Besson is selling, he's not shortchanging you. Three out of four. Okay. Ebert I'll is a rebel. <laughs> uh, Susan Granger from SSG Syndicate, who looks like Kristen wigs uh movie review character from weekend update says generic and mind numbing it leaves the door open for other perhaps inevitable installment four out of ten i think that means she gives it two huhs and five cars <laughs> i would love if she committed that much to the bit that aunt judy had a fucking 
blown. had her own re- cinematic review. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, hmm. this is my last critics one. Alonzo Duralde of the Rap says less a movie than it is a cinematic waterboarding. Which I mean, you should have held on to that one for the next one. Spoiler alert. Well, he didn't know. To be right. Fair. Uh. Like, oh. Well. <laughs> my last one. Mm-hmm. Uh, comes. It's a positive one, but I think he's biased because his name is Liam. Uh oh. Liam McGurin from Flix out of Australia, New Zealand, and the UK writes, "Still delivers what the fans won't see." Liam Neeson being a total badass. Three out of five. <laughs> um, and uh, again, better than Meryl Streep. Uh, well, you know what? I I I hone my craft. That's. And thing like anytime I'm not here entertaining you guys, I'm just practicing, practicing my accents, getting my dialect down just so, so that I can live up to that, uh, to that high praise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mission from... accomplished. Right. Yep. Um, okay. Well, let's jump into the audience reviews, the cesspool that we love to uh, visit every once in a while. Um, I'll start off with uh, Gerald H. And Gerald says, subpar, boring, no chemistry, hard to swallow that an almost 30-year-old Maggie Grace plays a shy teenager who needs driving lessons with her father. One star. Okay. Those are fair points. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't even realize. I mean, she looks young, but now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, she could also be 30. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Well, my first one comes from Ace R, and I can only assume that's uh, Ace Rimmer. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ace Arnold Ace Rimmer from Red Dwarf and he writes this is a good movie it's not one of Liam Neeson's best films but it's not bad either it's worth seeing though three and a half out of stars wow smoke me a kipper I'll be back for breakfast (laughs) there you go that's a little uh, little reference for you Red Dwarf fans out there there you go I'm assuming because I've never seen it (laughs) But that said, is, it's a red, it's red dwarf. Yeah. yeah, you said red dwarf earlier, so I put two and two together, and I got red dwarf. Um, Hugh M says <clears throat> the U.S. Embassy is in Ankara, not Istanbul. Your writers need to take a class in foreign relations. <laughs> two out of stars. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I love the fact that he's addressing Thank you, them. Hugh Morris. <laughs> oh, that's true. I forgot. I didn't even think about that. I, I love the fact that he's addressing as if like the studio reads these and was like, mm, "Can you call in the writers of Taken Two? This is ridiculous, guys. I mean, come on, Ankara, guys." Uh, well, uh, my next one is from Benjamin H, and I can actually only assume that's a last name first type situation because it's for H. John Benjamin. Sure. And uh, he writes, uh, Taken 2 has some fun moments, and Liam Neeson is always a pleasurable sight, but uh, this is a listless, foreseeable, uh, overly dump action film with awful villains and choppily filmed action. Do what it stars. Uh, this one is from Brandon S., but I'm assuming he meant to put Brandon F., and it's Brandon Flowers from Panic at the Disco. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't, <laughs> and I don't. I I can't do an impression. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. The charm of the first film is gone. The music and most of the acting is still okay, but that's about it. Maggie Grace shows her true colors as a mostly talentless actress, and the plethora of horribly cliched po- plot lines and quotables shows how stale the writing of the first movie really could have been. And never once do we hear what Neeson's less than intelligent retorts for his actions could and should have been. Something along the lines of your son would never have died had he not been standing in the way of saving my daughter. I think he does say stuff like that over and over again. Or I think Jensen even does that where she's like, at least my daughter's still alive. Yeah. Or I never killed your son. He killed himself when he kidnapped my daughter. He was dead long before I got to him. Subtle things like that can make or break a movie. At this point, it's more like Mellencamp's Jack and Diane. Just like life, the show goes on even after the thrill of watching is gone. One star. Okay. Uh, Brandon well, Flowers, uh, big na- John Cougar Mellencamp fan. Uh, it's from... Oh, well, I mean, they're an inspiration to Panic. You can tell. You listen to the music, it's right there. You're in every note. (laughs) 
Uh, my next one is from Anonymous. Uh, I can only assume it's Neil Breen. Um, and uh, because it's so ridiculously wrong-minded, this this take. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm actually a big fan of the Taken franchise. Personally, three is the best for me. Ooh. This one is still a great movie, though. Five out of stars. How'd you... What did you give the fucking next one? Seven out of stars, Meltzer? Just, I was going to say, does Taken 3 take place in Japan? Because <laughs> then it's getting seven. Um, this one is from Anonymous, I'm assuming. Um, I, I mean, probably not Neil Breen, because this was a negative one. A parody of the first Taken, Super Daddy Spy Jedi Master Liam gains new superpowers in defeating a bunch of tattooed brown-colored-looking Albanian kidnappers around the same or similar-looking mosque in Istanbul. Oh, and everyone speaks English. Two stars. Okay. I think, I think I, at first I looked at that and I was like, do I want to read that? But I think it's taking the piss out of the movie for doing that. Uh, my next one. Uh, comes from the multiverse version of you that get married to me. Uh, Brendan S., who writes, Such a disappointment. Nothing new or unique. Just his, he same premise, but way worse. I think, I'm thinking Brendan S. meant the same premise, but just he same premise, hmm. but way worse. One out of stars. Okay, well, it's weird that it's the multiverse version, because I also have problems with the word the... Uh, well, I mean, it's the multiverse version where you got married to me. Oh, right, 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 right. That's why it's a multiverse thing. Um, okay, this is my last one. Again, no name is given here. Um, I really liked this movie. Oh, the, by the way, this is a, a this is a visual review at the end here. I got I got to preface that so not everybody will get to enjoy this. I really liked this movie. Dot dot dot. Should probably watch the first one now. Okay. For the folks with the without the availability of video, which would be everybody, uh, Brendan basically did the um, uh, the smiley face emoticon, whatever you want to call them, where he's smiling but also sticking out his tongue. Yes, and five stars. The Miley Cyrus emoji, I think, would <laughs> I be would the best. I would use it all the time. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. I got one more coming at you here. Um, this one is from, uh, I'm guessing it's from, uh, uh, Neil Breen cause it's anonymous again. And, uh, Neil writes this time, fuck Rotten Tomatoes is a good movie. And then I think gives, a an emoticon version of the finger, but he's only got two dots. So I'm guessing this version of Neil Breen lost like a, a pinky in a shop class accident or something. Cause he's missing that. That extra dot, five out of stars. I can't believe I lost my pinky. I can't believe I lost it. <laughs> you can't help me out with this one, can you, Jim? I can't. I can't help you. Huh. All right. Well, there you go. <laughs> yep. That's our that's our take on Taken Two. Mm-hmm. Istanbul. Uh, we're gonna move on. Put that in the old rear view. And we're going to talk about some stuff that we do like or is good or both, maybe. Because it is time for the dance craze sensation that is sweeping the nation. That's right. It is time for the what you watching, bud. What you watching, bud? I don't know what you watching, bud. I'll tell you so. Do, 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 do. So, Brendan. Mm-hmm. What you watching, bud? Uh, well, Nathan, I went to the cinema Ooh. at Echo Sound Effects, Brendan. Ah. And I went to go see uh, a little horror film called Abigail. Um, this is from the uh, directors of Ready or Not and the recent, uh, the last two Scream movies. Um, it's really fun. Basically, just these these criminals kidnap the daughter of a powerful like mob boss underworld figure and you know the trailers really gave away a lot but i'm gonna i'm gonna give people the benefit of the doubt that some of them maybe didn't watch the trailer and i'm not gonna say too much i'm gonna say it's a horror movie and they kidnap a little girl who seems pretty innocent (laughs) and i'll just leave it at that um and it's got a great cast melissa barrera from the uh later scream movies Uh, she's in it dan stevens is in it Catherine newton from freaky um uh, Giancarlo Esposito has a small part and uh Kevin Durand who I know mostly from the TV show The Strain so check it out Abigail Okay 
I also went to the cinemas. Oh. And I uh, had unplanned. the opportunity. Well, uh, unplanned, exactly. <laughs> I And I, I had the opportunity to check out uh, the movie Civil War, yes, um, which was really good despite a complete lack of Captain America and Spider Man. Mm. Um, mm. But this one, man, oh, <sighs> Kristen Dunst is is great in this movie. Yeah, uh, Nick Offerman's in there for a cup of coffee, but he serves the plot so well. And uh, at first glance, this movie seems almost like. QAnon put the celluloid, but it's not. Mm-hmm. I, I definitely go check it out. Do your own research and check it out. Uh, it's 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 really good, um, man. I just I can't say enough about it. Any I feel like if I discuss too many plot points, I, I would be spoiling it. Uh, Kristen Dunst is a photographer. Uh, she takes a young photographer under her wing. They are on uh, a like a, I'm not cross country, but like a road trip mission to get an interview with the president of the United States because the uh, the U.S. has fallen into disarray where there's all kinds of different fighting factions all warring against each other in a civil war type situation. Oh. Uh, had a great time. That's all I'm going to say about it. It's I, I, I can't say uh, enough. It was uh, it, it's a it's a really good flick. Yeah, I and I'll I'll uh, I'll co-sign this one too because I also saw this movie and uh, I want to shout out as well Kaylee Spinney as uh, the girl in question, the young girl, the Jessie that gets uh, mm-hmm. taken under the wing. She's fantastic in this too. All the all the cast is really great. Fun to see Jesse Plemons show up for a cameo. Yeah, um, he ooh, he was bone chilling terrifying also um just to give people an idea going into this expecting like just a big action movie it's not that kind of movie uh this is from the guy who directed the movies men annihilation and ex machina so you're not just going to get a brainless thing here it's it's a tad more harrowing than that yeah 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 yeah. that's great well there There you go go. watch those movies folks and abigail yeah oh okay well now that we've now that we've recommended stuff that we genuinely like, we talked about Taken Two. We've read reviews of Taken Two. Um, somebody else probably wants to come and talk for a bit. Uh, Nathan, is your old pal Montrose Monkington around? He is. I will. I'll get him. Just give me one moment. Hello, it's your good friend Montrose Monkington the Third here, and I I would just like to invite all of you over to my YouTube channel, Montrose Monkington TV. Where in the coming months you may see uh, uh, some varying contributions, uh, some different things going on. I, uh, my, my editor Jerry, who's also my cameraman, uh, who's going to be working on some, uh, some, some different stuff. Uh, you'll still, I'll still be talking about the graps, uh, but I now have access to a green screen. Uh, so, so do tune in for that. Uh, and and if you like that, you could be friends with me at the the Facebook group Montrose Monkington the Third Esquire and friends. And finally, if you do wish so, uh, you could tweet at me on your Twitter devices. I remember, kids, the only acceptable instance of dead naming anything is when you do it to Twitter. Uh, you could do that on your Twitter devices at Montrose the Third. That's the number three R D. Thank you. More later. <laughs> Yeah. Indeed. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, good good uh good point there. I that, that is the only thing I'm only <laughs> that is the only thing I'm okay with uh with dead naming. Um uh, mostly cuz it belongs now to an awful 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 human being. Yeah. Um but speaking of that awful human being, we're also on that platform <laughs> on Twitter. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were gonna tell me you bought a fucking Cybertruck. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I've just started investing in Dogecoin, Nathan. I'm, I'm going. I, I actually recently saw the, uh, uh, the, the Cybertruck described as the incel Camino. Ah, uh, that's that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but we're on. We're begrudgingly. We we're on Twitter uh, and Blue Sky. And Blue Sky is probably better. And uh, Instagram at WWTT Podcast. Um, we're also on Facebook. Just search for us there. 
We're on all the podcast apps, although I will mention that apparently Google Podcasts is going the way of the Dodo in about a month. So if you use that, uh, maybe try switching to something else. Maybe try a little independent one or maybe just like YouTube music or something. Do you think that was why our, our, our God's Not Dead episode took forever to get up there? No, I don't think so. I think it was just a glitch. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then of course, uh, you can support us if you want to go to patreon.com slash WWTT podcast. Uh, you can, uh, pick movies for us. You can be a guest and lots of, lots of cool stuff like that. There are bonus episodes on there. Of course, I finally have g- went on there and decided to group them in a way that people can easily access them instead of just doing a bunch of searches and trying to find them. So they're, they're the quality of life improvements. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've upped to the budget on, uh, this SEO, I guess. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's, uh, you know, Redbubble, Tee Public. that's pretty much it though. Um, I guess, uh, I guess at this point, I'll, I guess I'll just, I'll ask you questions, Nathan, but maybe, well, maybe. I, I, I've, I've paid theater money for all three Taken movies, oh, so Lord. I feel that, uh, I have those answers for you. Well, thank you for your sacrifice. Um, thank you for your service. Uh, I get. I mean, maybe these questions will be answered next week, but I, I guess I just got to ask. In, in a movie, mm-hmm. in in which uh, Liam Neeson tells his daughter that the best way to locate someone is to throw grenades in a crowded city, right? Uh, in in a movie in which a a, a young lady who may also be thirty, um, who was all but a victim in the first movie suddenly has at least a, a quarter of a particular set of skills in this one. Right. In, in a movie in which, uh, Liam Neeson at times out of context just looks like he's racial profiling in, in public. Um, and in a movie in, in which has the namby pamby happiest doodah ending for a movie like this i think i've ever seen right i guess uh i guess i just gotta ask what's that my friend what were they thinking but did you see that liam neeson's movie with them wolves though the one with them big ass wolves and liam neeson's in it liam neeson's oh. is my shit yo liam neeson straight jacked up them man, wolves man, man. He fucked them wolves up <laughs> shoot man hey Ooh. and don't even get me started on that one when they took his daughter straight took it starring liam neeson's man liam neeson's on the phone like I have a certain set of skills. Man, don't fuck with Liam Neeson. Yo, don't even try and be rushing around Liam Neeson. He'll take your arm out. Scratches of the man. I kill him, the man, man. And then, in, oh, you see the second one now? In the second one, the Russians come after him, and he fucks them all up anyway. Took in two, starring the incomparable Liam Neeson. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's my shit. 